hello beautiful people and welcome to my channel if you're new hi i'm kira and welcome to my channel today's video is going to be what i read over the december and january period i thought i would put it together just because it was the festive period and so some books overlapped into the different months so i thought i would include it in one video hopefully you can get some recommendations if you are looking for new books to read or see if i have similar opinions of the books that you have already read so the first book that I read is Illegal by Miriam Halimi. I really hope that I'm pronouncing her name right. I really enjoy mystery novels. That's probably like my first kind of preference for a book. Anything to do with mystery or thriller or where something has to be found out. And so I really enjoy this book. I actually am working my way through books that I've collected over the years, especially during university, because there's so much of reading articles, textbooks, lecture notes, etc. So I don't really get to enjoy some of the books that I was reading or I didn't end up getting to it. So these are books that I've gotten in like the last five or six years and just haven't gotten into. It's basically about this girl who basically her family has just lost her baby sister and it shows how she has to basically take the reins of the family take reins of her life and try to get things back together and she ends up meeting this boy who's actually mute and they both try and help each other to kind of escape from whatever lives they are leading whether that be her and her familial life or him trying to escape his past. I'm not trying to give a lot away, but there were, it was very well written and it really made you want to read further on in the story. And I think if you are looking for something about escapism or any kind of mystery or um, a bit of a thriller to see whether the characters will end up getting what they want, this would be a perfect book for you. I would probably give this a three and a half star rating just because I wish that at the end they gave us a little more insight to what happened after the story ends where it is. The next book I read is something that everyone should know by now unless you've been living under a rock and that is The Alchemist by Pablo Sejo. I really am bad with names. Yeah. To be honest, I was very underwhelmed by this book and this is probably because everyone gave such big great recommendations about it including celebrities so i kind of built it up in my head over the years i just thought maybe it would have provided a little bit more insight or self-help but it was more so just a short fable that i think even a 12 year old can read and maybe that's why i felt that way probably because like my reading although it's not that it's complicated it's just that the story has more i guess depth to it i'm, I'm sure it is amazing and I love the message that it was giving about following your dreams and always making sure that you are not sacrificing your dreams for the pleasure of others or for the for having easier, simpler, more straightforward lifestyle. I definitely understand and I think in our society sometimes people make us scared to go after our dreams in case of failure. So I definitely understood it. I just think that I built it up in my head so much that I was underwhelmed by the time I ended up reading it. So I'll give this a 2.5 star. The next book is The History of a Pleasure Seeker by Richard Mason. And I actually got this from an online book thrift store, which doesn't exist anymore. But I got this along with two other books. And at the time, I actually didn't know that this writer was South African. So that was a added bonus, I guess. And I really enjoy this book. It's basically about this boy who lives in Amsterdam. He lost his mother at a really young age and his father and him have a bit of a strained and distant relationship, you can say. So this boy really wants to make sure that with his life, he ends up being successful and has enough money to basically get all the pleasures that he wants in life. And he goes to work for a family whose son needs a tutor. But the twist is, is that this boy, he has some mental issues. And this book is basically about how this this guy goes on to help this family son recover and along the way he learns about how the higher social classes of Amsterdam live and how he tries to kind of class jump. It's really really well written and I think it highlights class dynamics, the difference in different parenting styles and also how different relationships and 
marriages especially can flourish or be threatened by different problems and i would give it a 3.5 star rating the only reason i say 3.5 is again i just wish there was more given after the story and after the story ended where it did next is the haunting of nathaniel wolf this was a predictable but very enjoyable book I knew from the start almost, like I think within the first five or six chapters already what was going to happen in the book. And maybe that predictability might turn off some people, but the, I really enjoyed it. I just enjoyed how they described 18th century London and again, the different class dynamics. I don't know why that is a theme. I swear that was not intended for the video or the books that I choose to read. But basically, it is about this boy who lost, again, his mother at a very young age. His dad is an, is an actor. However, when his mother dies, the father doesn't have his supporting actor, which was his wife. And he decides to act as a medium, so someone that can communicate with those that have passed on. And he makes money by acting as if he can speak to ghosts or the spirits of people to try and give them closure. A sweet gesture, but obviously he is not in the right by tricking people. Nathaniel Wolf is a very, very good-hearted boy despite what life has given him. And he gets caught up in a murder, an attempted murder kind of story. And he tries to get to the bottom of it with the help of friends that he's made along the way and the family he's built for himself since him and his dad do not get along. I think why I enjoyed the book is that there was a very good balance between narrative and descriptive factors. I don't like a book that's overly descriptive because I feel like then the story doesn't get along and you're just reading extra detail. But I also don't want a narrative where there's not enough descriptive factors because then you're not really building the picture of what the author is trying to get across to you. I would give this a 3.5 star rating as well. The next is one of the best books that I read in the last maybe 10 years or so. And that is Verity by Colleen Hoover. Again, this has been on BookTube, BookTok, BookGram, whatever you want to call it, for the longest time. Especially because Colleen Hoover has become a highly recommended young adult novelist. So I chose Verity again because as I said, I love thought-provoking thriller mystery sort of novels. This story... First of all, I'm going to give it like a 5 out of 5 rating. I I think what I really liked about this story is that each time I thought I knew what was going on, there was another twist and I was like, hold on, what is going on? And it really, really makes you think about what the next step of the author is going to be. And basically, if you, have, if you haven't read or known about Verity, Verity is about this family who lost their daughter and shortly after the mother became very sick and is now bedridden. The name of Verity is actually the name of this mother who's a famous writer but she never really ever finished some of her books. So the father of the family decided to hire a publisher and writer to kind of finish his wife's series and to get it published as a last ode to her professional life. When this lady takes up the job and she's just gotten out of a very bad breakup, so she moves in with the family to try and get to know Verity a lot better so she can kind of get into her mindset and see how she would have written, how she would have developed her characters, etc. Because obviously any type of writing, whether it's fictional or non-fictional, has some kind of personal relevance or kind of a personal writing style. However, in doing that, she finds a transcript that has all of these family secrets and she learns things she kind of wish she hadn't learned before and she wonders what to do with it whether she should use it to her advantage or whether she should just keep her mouth shut basically get on with the job and finish it off and this story is basically her personal struggles with kind of dealing with that decision she has to make but also internally having a conflict of what she's reading like some of the stuff is really, really hectic and I definitely would think that this book is for a much older audience. But I swear if you can get your hands on this book and you like novels that really make you think are not straightforward, etc. Then I would highly recommend it. And I'm just going to say by the time you get to the end of this book, you will still be thinking about it years later. I read this I think at the beginning of December. And now it is mid-February and I still cannot go get over this book. I talk about it with my sister 
all the time. My next book is A Muslim Girl, which is a coming of age story by Amani al Katabe. And it is a true story that is a short memoir, I guess, about Amani, who is basically a immigrant from the Middle East. And she comes to live in New York. And it shows how she, you know, she enjoyed her life. She always knew something was different about her because she, you know, wore a hijab. The color of her skin was different. And she basically talks about her life as an immigrant as well as how it changed after 9-11 and what made her want to start a website called Muslim Girl. This is a true heartfelt story. It is a short book. I think it's like less than 150 pages. And it's just a heart-wrenching story of what it's like to be different in America, what it feels to be part of a group that is ostracized just because of a handful of people's actions and how she kind of gets through it and how she decides to take back her identity as a Muslim girl living in America. Besides dealing with, um, you know, just her issues that she faced as a Muslim person, it also was about the differences in obviously the different genders, her educational background, her parents' educational background, as well as the opportunities that were afforded to her compared to other people around her. It talks about so many aspects such as religion, class dynamics, um, racism, stigmas, and obviously it's rooted in history, something that a lot of people can relate to. So this was like a four star rating. An Abundance of Catherines by John Green is a very, very unique novel to say the least. Basically why I say this story is so unique is it's because it's kind of about maths. I know, a romance novel with Matt, what is going on? It's about this boy who has only ever dated Catherine's. He has dated, I think, 18 or 19 Catherine's and has just been dumped by the one that he was the most in love with and had the longest term relationship with. Because of his heartbreak, his best friend wants to take him onto a road trip and he has a ton of adventures and learns a lot about himself. But while simultaneously doing this, the main character is a prodigy. He is excellent at things such as math and literature, languages and anagrams. And he always knew that he wants to be successful. And so he comes up with the concept to come up with a theorem on how to see how and when a relationship will last, why it will break up on different you know, factors. And he goes and throughout his experience over the summer road trip, he tries to try different scenarios based on different things he experiences. But while doing that, I think he learns a lot about what it truly means to be successful and live. It was a very, very interesting book. There is a lot of math talk, I would say, but I think even if you don't have a mathematical brain, that's just not your thing. The actual storyline is really, really interesting. And I just think it's a brilliant take for a different romance novel. I would give this a four star rating as well. The second last book is Lord of the Flies by William Golding. Lord of the Flies, if you don't know, is about this group of boys that are basically going on an excursion and their plane ends up meeting with an accident and they get stranded on an island in the middle of nowhere. Mind you, these groups of boys are like under the age of 12 and the youngest is I think in like grade one, so six or seven. And I loved the concept of kind of making it seem like it's a children's fable, but actually turning it into something a little bit more sinister to kind of give social commentary on things such as a zest for power, politics, um, again classes and this idea that there's always going to be someone better than you and there's always going to be a fight for power based on many different things whether that's your race your gender your your amount of money or just because you have certain things that another person doesn't and I think using children as a medium through which William Golding tried to convey that message is something profoundly unique I don't think there's another book that has children in it but is not meant for children to read if that makes sense like it's not like a fairy tale story it's something that has a lot of elements that are not really nice to talk about or think about i mean this was written i think in the 1940s if i'm not mistaken 
and a lot of the concepts still apply nearly you know 80 years later i would definitely give this book also a four star rating my last book is actually a book my sister got me for my 21st birthday and it's a book called dangerous women by hope adams i've never heard of this author and i've never heard of this book but my sister got it for me and i think she also knew i love you know mystery novels and stuff and what i really loved about this book is that it was so woman focused or female focused this book is basically about how it's set in the mid to late 1800s, if I'm not mistaken. It basically talks about these women who have been sentenced to go to what is now known as Australia. If you didn't know before Australia came to be what it is now, it was actually a penal colony of the British Empire. And what that means is that they actually sent some of the prisoners away just because they either didn't have enough prisons or they just didn't want any of the prisoners to be anywhere near society and so they sent them to another country or another island that was discovered which is australia the ship leaves with all of these female prisoners each of them having committed more so like simple you know theft or small crimes nothing too bad and it gives a little bit of insight into each of the women how they ended up getting them but the whole story is that a murder of one of the women, one of the only women with a child on board, takes place. And the entire book basically goes through how each of the different women could have possibly been the perpetrator. As well as seeing how the different women kind of try not to blame each other, but try to find things out themselves rather than only waiting around to let the policeman and the captain on board try and figure out what's going on. I will say, however, the first half of the book was extremely, extremely long. I, I couldn't concentrate at the beginning on the book just because there was so much of unnecessary detail. But once you got through the first half, the second half was really focused on the actual murder mystery part and figuring out who murdered the woman and giving different scenarios about how things could have happened. I definitely think that this book could have been like cut down by at least a quarter or a third just because of the unnecessary detail in the first half but the second half really makes the book worth reading i will give this book a four star rating so those are the books that i have read over the december and january period i really hope that you guys enjoyed this video it is a little bit different but i want to try and make what i read in a month kind of video every month just because i think i'm going to get a lot of reading done within this year just because i'm not studying anymore so i have free time to actually read and enjoy what i'm reading rather than just reading tons of journal articles and textbooks and things like that so please let me know if you would want me to do what i read in february because trust me i am reading very 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 interesting books and i won't be posting for the next two weeks because i'm actually doing something very very exciting so if you want to stay tuned for that definitely do hit the subscribe button below and also please comment down any other videos you want to see and i hope that you guys have a wonderful few weeks ahead since i won't be seeing you for another two weeks i hope that you guys have a lovely two weeks ahead filled with lots of love happiness light and positivity see you guys bye